what it do, you tune in to the Jose Morales Podcast. I'm your host, Jose Morales, and we're back in the ring this time with a special guest. Welcome on the show, my guy DT. Do you want me to introduce you as Daniel or DT? You know, I feel like when I'm being like polite, first time I introduce myself as Daniel, but as people get to know me, they, it's DT. DT? So, yeah. Oh, uh, and it's your initials too, and DT's your it initials? It is, yep. Yeah. Because your last name is? Thomas. Thomas. Yes, sir. So was that on accident? No. Or, or was it that? It was all on purpose. It yeah, purpose? it was all on purpose. It, it initially was Daniel Thomas training when I was trying to think of a name because, you know, you just want to put your name in there. So it was like DTT. And then I was like, that sounds too much like ADT security system. I was, all, <laughs> I was like, this is just weird, you know. So I was like, I got to figure out how to make it DT. And so for the longest time, I didn't know what to do. Um, and then me and one of my friends were actually driving to Southern California for a conference. And he was like talking about dynamic this, dynamic yeah. that. And I'm like, ooh, dynamic training. Like, I like that. And so, and then I was like, it's DT. And so that's where I kind of morphed them together. And so when I first started training, it was I train with DT. And now it's I train at DT. Yeah. And so it's been fun to see the progress. Yeah, there. and how it kind of grew from there. Yeah, for sure. That's dope. That's dope. So we're going to get familiar with dynamic training with DT. Hey. And uh, we're going to get familiar with a story. Uh, some of you guys have been following the gym or know of uh, Alex, Angel, Amy, uh, I think that's it. Antonio. That's, and Antonio yeah. that's been going over there and training with, with DT once a week. And he's actually he's helped him a lot. He helped a lot, Amy, with the recovery when she hurt her foot. Uh, so, we're, and there's a lot of reason why I wanted to have him here. Uh, he, he brings a lot of value. His story is, is great. He was just telling me uh, his stories of him working at Cairo, which we're going to talk about because you have to hear these stories. But uh, he's just the value of everything he's going to bring. And then the value he brings here to our community, he's right next to us. He's, what, like three miles, four miles Less, away? Less, like it's, two miles away. Yeah, yeah it's, it's crazy Right close. next to us. So um, let's, let's, let's talk about it, man. Yeah, so it. at the beginning, before, before we get talking, I wanted you to, uh, how did you feel having your name with your business name? Like, did that feel weird or did- Like or DT? Did, yeah, like, or like, yeah, like DT. Like, you know how you say your name was Daniel? Like, how did you, did it make you feel weird? The reason why I'm saying that is when I, cause I don't know, I actually changed the name of the gym myself. Right, right. And, and I went to Jose Morales Boxing Academy and no joke, like the first few months, it was hella weird for me knowing that my name was on it. And it just felt a little uncomfortable. I'm like, I wonder if you felt that way. Well, how was it for you? Was it, did it, or? To be honest thing? with you, mine was kind of the opposite <clears throat> because I started off as people just, I didn't have a brand name. Like I didn't yeah. have anything to change. So people, it was just, oh, I train with DT. Like that's my so guy, that's what right I work in. with. So then when it kind of transitioned, we got a little bit bigger and now people it's go around DT. and say that I train at DT. And a lot of, half the kids don't even know I'm DT. Uh, just because of the way that it's grown and expanded because I've really tried to embrace the coaches as like, hey, this is our group of coaches, this yeah. is our family, you know, that welcome to DT instead of, hi, I'm DT. Yeah. And, uh, and so in the beginning, it was actually a little bit of an ego shot. Like I had to check myself a little bit because I started getting a little upset. Like, like what you mean you don't know my name's on your chest? Like, yeah. you know what I mean? Or people will be like, what's your name? Which coach are you? I'm like, I'm DT, man, come on, like, you know? Yeah. Uh, and so in the beginning, it was kind of an ego check where I'm like, man, people like, but then I had to, remember and recognize like this is what you want in a business you want to have growth to where you know that Amen. it's not just on me it's on now we're a team exactly and exactly. so it, it's been it's been a blessing but it was a great uh it was a good transition but definitely different for me because i was actually more used to it being my name yeah and so even though it's still dt it's actually transitioning more out of my name into dynamic training yeah versus just daniel thomas that so, makes sense yeah yeah similar uh with i think with me the reason why i named it after myself i i don't know if you're familiar with like martial arts is like you train under sensei for sure for sure so, so i yeah. wanted to go that route okay and that's why i chose my name because i actually hate my name i hate my name first name i hate jose so <laughs> damn popular so i was like fuck i can't believe i'm naming my name after a name i hate but i i like that whole like tradition made it want more like a like an art you know what i'm saying right for sure but that's dope man i i see what you're saying with the ego you're like hey i had to check myself because it's is you as you as a brand right um so tell me about yourself man i know you you I know what you do now. Before we get into what you're doing now in your gym now, I want to know about you. Like, what's your what's your story, man? You you siblings? Where were you born? Where were you raised? What school did you go to? Give me your story, man. Give me your 401 of how you ended up to where you're at now. For sure. So my dad's from South Sacramento. Mm -hmm. My mom's from Roseville. 
uh, they How link, the they, meet? they linked up yeah, through, through the Mall. church, man. <laughs> <laughs> the Arden Mall used to be Before Yeah, exactly. That's what I'm saying. Uh, they met through church. Uh, my dad actually is the co-founder of Lord's Gym. Oh. So my dad started Lord's Gym back in 92. Uh, it was right before I was born, actually. Um, and so my dad and them, our pastor, they partnered up and created that Lord's Gym. Dope. The whole thing they were the, the only spot back in the day, like, man. They even had boxing. They had everything, yeah, yeah, back in the day. So everything in this area, especially Roosevelt, has exploded. Mm -hmm. um, so Lord's Gym has kind of evolved and changed. But back in the day, they were the spot. If you wanted to lift, if you wanted to box, if you wanted to hoop, everything. anything, they I, were the, the place. The basketball uh, league was bad. It was. I heard. It was before Lifetime, you know, yeah. really popped off and things like that. Mm -hmm. Lord's Gym was the spot. So. My parents met, my mom was like, I'm not moving to South Sac. Like, you're coming out here to Roseville. Yeah. So uh, my roots have been pretty much here, Roseville, Rockland, Loomis, this general area. Um, played sports growing up, ended up playing college football at Western Oregon. That's my college background. Um, and that's where I really fell in love with training, speed, agility, because back in the day, there was no speed agility for kids. It was like if you were a high level high school athlete or you were in college or pros, you started getting that next level training. But other than that, there was no youth training yeah. other than playing catch with your pops, you know what I yeah, mean? Yeah, that's, that's true. Um, and so then I got into the recovery world. I started working at US Cryotherapy because I got injured and I started going there. It was this brand new place. Everyone's like, you walk into this freeze a room and feel better. I'm like, that's what I was like, that's wild. But I was so injured and I was desperate because I was a senior in high school on a scholarship trying to get out and I was like, I can't be injured. Like, I don't want to lose my scholarship. So I was like, I'll do whatever. Like, you could have done some, uh, what's it called? Uh, Captain America injection on me. Like, I was ready. I was like, I need to be healed. Yeah. So I went into this place, started getting no, um, the business was small at the time. So the owners were running the show because it was a small mom and pa shop at the time. So was going in there a bunch. They, they liked me. Um, they actually ended up having an opening. And everybody else working there was older, like mid-30s, um, late-20s. And I was this 18 year old kid and they're like, hey, we really like you. We got a spot. I'm a big believer in, in the word favor. So I feel like, you know, God opened up an opportunity for me and I got to work there. And uh, that's where my crazy journey at US Cryotherapy started. How, how long were you there? I was there off and on for seven years. Oh shit. Yeah, so I was I there, for, there for a minute. <clears throat> I was there from 28 or 2012 to 2014. Then I went off to school to finish up football playing at Western Oregon. So I was gone for two years. Came back with my degree after school and then worked there all the way up until like 2019. What made you come back after your degree to there? I mean, it had to have a environment or culture or something that made 100%. you like, you know, I like this place. What yeah. was it? Well, the biggest thing for me is the reason I had success there is because I believed in the product. And mm -hmm. I'm a big, big push on that. Like people say, oh, sales is hard. Well, sales isn't hard when you believe in what you do or when you love what you do. You know what I mean? So Amen. at Cryo, Amen. I was a testament. I was like, this thing worked for me. So people walked in and they had an ankle injury and I'm like, this is gonna work. And they're like, why are you so sure? I'm like, cause it worked on me. Like I'm telling you from experience, mm -hmm. you know? Um, and so I had a passion. I still to this day, like if dynamic training didn't turn into what it is today, like I would probably probably be my full time like lifelong job. Like I love that business. I love everything about it. So um, came back with my degree and was like, hey, I want to help run the show. And so I ended up moving into a general manager position. And that's where I made all these connections. Like I said, we worked with the Kings, Lakers, Clippers, almost every NBA team at one point walked in those doors. Yeah. So we got pictures of Blake Griffin, Chris Paul, like everybody. And so it was an awesome job and not only did I like it and enjoy it but I got to meet big time athletes like you can't beat that yeah because so. you said this location here was the first location in the country in the country yeah so that made all these people they come, had to come here they had to come here yeah share one of those stories of meeting one of those athletes oh my gosh uh the funniest one was probably when the Lakers came through and this is back when Ron Artest was on the Lakers and I don't know if you guys remember this, it was a while ago, but he had that big elbow and he elbowed that dude in the back of the head. Mm -hmm. I don't remember who he was playing, but um, big fight and he elbowed this guy in the back of the head. And Ron it's, it's on- a lot though. <laughs> he did that all the time. He punched <laughs> he a dude in the stands. Yeah, like no. he was a wild cat. Yeah, I'm, I'm trying to think. I'm like, he was hitting people all the time. Yeah, all the time. So it was, but it was all over our TVs yeah. on ESPN. Like Ron Artest, elbows guy in the head, you know? And so Ron Artest is laying on this, our localized bed, which is where we do like isolated treatments. So I'm working on his hamstring and he's taking up the whole freaking bed because he's, he's huge. Yeah, he's his team. hamstring's like as long as his table, dude. I'm like working on it. And all his teammates, especially like the younger guys that are on the bench, they're like, they're like, hey, localize his elbow. Like work on his elbow. And I'm like, shut up, bro. Like I'm not about to do that. 
And the whole time he's on the phone with his agent, like, they know I'm the baddest dude in the league. Like, I'm not going to apologize. Like, he's fighting with his agent on the phone. And they're wanting me to freeze his elbow. I'm like, I could walk under this dude's legs. Like, there is no chance I'm doing that. So they I were, probably wouldn't want to fuck with Ron Artest. No, no. That he's, guy's, he's like the dude that would probably punch you in the fucking face. For real. <laughs> like, he punched a random guy in the stands. Like, you want me to come after him when he's, like, hot on a topic? I'm like, no, not a chance. So that was that was one of my fun stories of uh, the, the banter back and forth between yeah. some of those pro guys. So what was the process for you? Like, what made you know that it was time for you to leave there and start dynamic training? Like, what 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 happened? Talk to me during that process. Shoot, man, it was it was the hardest decision I ever made because I've been I've always been a hustler. I, I love mm -hmm. training. So I was actually even while I was a GM, I was an Orange Theory coach, and I was doing DT on the side, dynamic training on the side. Oh shit! Well, so Orange I was Theory, doing it which all. One we're at? Um, I was at Roseville and Rockland. Okay, the so the right one here. yeah the ones close to here. And, uh, and I loved it because I love training and I love people. I feed off people. Energy mm -hmm. is just, that's just, I live for that. Yeah. Um, and, but my, my business dynamic training, it just kept building and kept growing, kept growing. And finally, like I'm a pretty honest guy. So I was like, all right, this is going to start taking away from my energy and time towards my salary job, which was cryo. So I had to talk with the owners and I'm like, guys, I don't know if, uh, I think I need to step away and give this a shot. I was like, I'm young at the time. I was only 24, 23, 24. Um, and I was like, I'm young. I got to step out and, and give my love, my passion a shot. I was like, if I fall on my face in two years, like I'll come back and we'll see if you guys will take me, you know, or whatever will happen. Like there will always be other jobs out there. So, um, and it was a scary decision. Cause right when I sat down with the owners and started talking about that, they were like, oh, well, what if we transition you into this role? Like all of a sudden it was like, they gave me a better opportunity with a little bit more money. It was travel. I was single, like it was just a good setup, yeah, and I'm like, dang. What if I give you this good ass water to drink? <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, yeah. and uh, and and not that they were, you know, telling me I couldn't do it, but they were just like, they 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 saw value in me, and I appreciated that. But it made the decision even harder, and so I was, I had to like just close my eyes and jump, man. I was like, you know what? Like, I just have to do this. And the moment I jumped and went, so the, you went full throttle. You full throttle. I quit all my job. I went. I quit Orange Theory first, then I eased that. How was Orange Theory? Oh, it was fun. It was fun. The environment's cool. Music's music's loud. Lights are kind of low. It kind of has like a little bit of a nightclub vibe, depending yeah. on which classes you do. Yeah. Um, was that hard to leave too? Hard to leave because I love people. Yeah. So I had I had relationships with people, um, but I didn't have nearly the attachment to like the actual company. Yeah. yeah the way at Cryo, I grew up in that company. I helped it grow, so I felt like I had ownership in it. You know what yeah, I mean? Like yeah, I took you were ownership. To it. Exactly. Yeah, so, yeah. but yeah, man, I just jumped in, and the moment I went full 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 force in the dynamic training, it just exploded. What's and what's full force? Explain full force. Full force do? is going- Did you get a building right away? Did no, you, like what's no, no, full no. force? So by full force, I just mean like all my time and focus and energy was dedicated mm -hmm. on that. Instead of it being a third job that I kind of, people would talk to me and I get back to them. It's like all of a sudden, now it's like, hey, I'm open for availability. Now I'm going out and going to kids games, talking to teams, talking to coaches. Um, going out and starting to do more social media, you know, branding myself more. Yeah. And that's when the, and the logo came with out. That. I appreciate amazing. that. Amazing. You do really, really good. Thank you. Uh, question about that. How do you handle the video and all that? You do it yourself or do you have someone videotape or what do you do? Half and half. Okay. So half of it I do myself as far as like just in when we're in classes or I have like, you know, a basic little ring light that I do videos with. Mm -hmm. um, but then I've worked with a few different videographers throughout the time. Like I worked with Rick, Ricky yeah. Yee, um, Keone, um, those are the two main guys that do more of the professional videos that I do. So whether that's YouTube or some of my Instagram reels. How do you handle the videos when you have a client and you're doing it on your phone? Do you let them know or you just start doing it? I'm curious. This is a little bit of off So big, most, most curious. of it, I, most of it is people that I've been with for a long time. If it's somebody new, I'm not focused on branding. I'm focused yeah. on giving them the that most the value, the that best sense. that they can get. You know what I mean? I'm yes, trying to, because first impressions are everything. And my goal at the gym is to make you feel immediately like not only are you getting a good deal, good bang for your buck, but like you're part of the family. I want to invest my time into you, make yeah. you the best, you know. So. And uh, so you gave your full energy. Are you at a gym doing this? Are you doing it? Where, where was it where you first started off? Yeah. So I rented. I was at four different spots. I bounced around quite a bit, mm -hmm. um, renting spots. And I tell everybody that's starting their business, starting their training business, rent a spot first. Keep your overhead low. That's what saved me. It was like, you know what, I'm going to pay five, six, seven hundred bucks a month to somebody to utilize their facilities. But that saves you out. You don't have to pay no rent, no utilities, no insurance. Yeah. You don't have to pay for any of the equipment. Like that is the best way to grow your business and to keep a lot of money in your pocket. Amen. A man. lot of people want to start and they want their own spot. They want to go big right away. Bro, it's 
overhead's the silent killer of small business owners, you know yeah. what I mean? So, and you gotta be able to take care of yourself first, otherwise, no matter how much you love something, you're gonna burn out eventually. Yeah. If you ain't got no money and you're not able to provide and- Cause then you're doing it to make money, not doing it because you care for them and you want them to perform. So you're at four different places. How long were you at the four different places before it was time for you to be like, you know what, it's time for me to get my own place? Was it years, months? Yeah, so it was from 2018 is when I first started renting space. Went all the way up to right when COVID struck, 2020. Uh, when COVID hit, we went out to the parks, went outside, um, and we were out at the parks for probably, shoot, I don't know, eight months, six to eight months of just bouncing around different parks, staying outside. Now, part of that was just COVID in general. I would have been inside somewhere renting if, yeah. I, if it wasn't due to that. Um, but then from there, it got dark, and I had no place but outside. It was getting dark at four o'clock, five o'clock. And I'm like, I need lights, I need a spot. And so that's when we started going on the hunt. And so 20, 2020, maybe close to 2021 is when I got into my first spot that was just mine that I was renting out of. Yeah, and it started, I remember when I went over, you gave me the tour, it started at how much square footage? Uh, it started around 3,000 square feet. And then you grew it into- And then we grew to about 4,500 square feet. And, and now, now we're at about 6,000 square feet. Wow. Yeah. And you just kept growing and growing. Kept growing, And you need to keep growing. I, you know what? We're, yeah. We'll see where I things hear, go, man. I hear great things about, uh, I, like I've had people, like I said, Brian's son yeah, yeah. goes there. I have a few people here, Amy, Alex, Antonio, tell me about it. And uh, they tell me great things as far as not just the facility, but how you are as a trainer and it's amazing. And that's actually what I made me and attracted me to you that I wanted to make sure I had them with you is not just the knowledge and the energy you provide, but the attention, the attention. You can tell you're paying attention. You're, you can tell you're there. You're not just there. Does that right. make sense? For sure. So. And I was like, you know what? And then you're right here, everything. I was like, well, let's make it happen. So that's what I hear from it. What do you think for you, what it is that, what is it that dynamic training stands out to so many people? Why is it that people love your business so much, your gym? What, what do you hear? What do you think it is? So the, the few things that I hear in the community is the first thing people say is that energy and the environment, kind of like you were talking about. All of our coaches are positive. Um, we're all about loving our athletes first, bringing out the best in them first before we drop a hammer on them and we decide to, to criticize or critique them. We always give them lots of love first because a big believer in if they don't know that you care, they don't really care about what you know. You know yeah. what I'm saying? So some coaches have great critiques, but they come out too hot. They don't even know a kid yet. They don't even know his name and they're coming out. Hey, you need to fix this, adjust this and kids get turned off. Especially because, just to be honest, you know, kids are kind of soft nowadays. You yeah. know what I mean? The world's getting softer. And so you've got to show people that you love them and you care about them before you're dropping the hammer on them. You know what I mean? So that you can tell them when you do drop the hammer, it's like, hey, I know I just dropped this on you, but that's because I care. But you know I care about you and I want to see you succeed. In order to get there, we have to make these adjustments. Yeah. You know what I mean? And so confidence, energy, love are the things that I'd say the community um, would probably say about us that I absolutely love. Um, and it's funny because not once did, is anyone going to be like, oh, because I got faster, mm -hmm. which is what we do. I mean, that's why people come to us, but that's not even like the first one, two or three things that people even say about us. So I think that speaks volumes, you yeah. know. That's what makes community. Yeah. I mean, 100%. that's what makes that create that loyalty for yeah. the long term. But yeah. I do. I do pay attention too, like you were saying. And I give that same attention to like every kid that walks in the door, mm -hmm. which is a lot of kids nowadays. And so like I get home, my wife will be the first one to tell you. I'll text her, I'll be like, babe, I'm coming home. I'm not talking for 20 minutes. Yeah. She's like, what? I feel <laughs> you on that. I feel you on that. You know? I, 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 I'm, I'm, I'm very, very similar to that, man. I get home, I'm like, yo, I'm fucking exhausted. Like, Wipes. Like, like I just can't talk. Yeah. Like I just need, talking hurts. Like I just need to chill the fuck out. So I feel you on that. Yeah. How do you how do you wind down, man? How do you recuperate? How do you fill your cup? What do you do? Honestly, it's the the seeing people's success and seeing people like I know I'm a big Gary Vee fan. I talk about it all the time. Mm -hmm. He's really big on don't, you know, don't put a lot of weight in people's compliments because then you put a lot of weight in people's, you know, hate. And when people bash you and say bad things about you, like you attach your emotions to stuff too much. Mm -hmm. But man, when people like, when you get a review, it says, you know, oh, I think dynamic training saved my son's life. You know, stuff like that. It's like, holy moly, man. How do you not let that punch you in the throat? You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And so that stuff just absolutely fuels me and feeds me. And like, 
seeing people get better, seeing people believe in themselves and like have those confidence boosts, that's really what just energizes me to the max, man. Man, it's like my, my long lost twin right here. <laughs> <laughs> hey, that, 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 that's exactly how it is with me too, for sure, man. So where do you see dynamic training going in the future? Like, Dude, what's your vision for it? Do you have, like, are you happy with where it's at? You're content with it? Do you, this is a question I get asked all the time. Do you want to franchise it? <laughs> I, what, I hate that question. I know. <laughs> I, I, I'm going I'm to be, yeah. be that annoying person. So what, what, tell me. I would love to know your answer after, after I talk about this. Okay. Uh, where dynamic training is now is where, if people were to ask me three years ago, where do you want to be? I want to have my own spot. I want to have a bunch of kids. I want to have a good brand. I want to have a good community. I want coaches. Like, that's what I wanted, and that's what I have now. And I'm so blessed and so happy to have that now. Mm. So now when people ask me, like, that next level, you know, oh, do you want is 20 dynamic trainings all over, you know, mm. franchising? And I don't know, to be honest with you. Like, that's just the honest truth. I don't know because I'm so big on giving value and touching yeah. and loving every single kid that I'm absolutely terrified of the idea of my name and brand being everywhere and me not knowing how much value is being given to these people. So I struggle with that, you know? And uh, part of that is, is a good thing because I wanna give so much value. And then part of that is me needing to grow as a leader slash business owner yeah. to be able to say, I'm, I'm gonna be more of a delegator that puts good people in positions, you know? Yeah. Uh, and that's what I'm working on. That's my self work right now is yeah. trying to get to that point where I can step back and say, you guys, I trust you, you guys run the show because I don't want to say, hard. I'm not a micromanager, but like I like to put my touch on things, you know? It's my brand, it's my baby. So I struggle with that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's a micromanager. I swear I'm not, I swear. I swear. <laughs> A little bit, a little bit. He said, but. <laughs> but what like about you? Like, how do you feel about that when people talk to you about that? Uh, so I've actually got to experience a, 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 a business, a boxing gym franchise before. Okay. So I've experienced that. I, I think the fact that I got to experience that kind of helped me look at it from a different point of view. And then I've also looked into like CrossFit and what they do. And, right. And I'm similar to you when you say, oh, I want to add value and I care so much with my name 100%. On, on somewhere else. Like, do I really, really want that? Yeah. And the answer to that is no, I do not want that. I do not want to have my gym. I wouldn't want to have 100 Jose Morales Boxing Academies. You know why? Because there's only one Jose Morales. Facts. That is why <laughs> I wouldn't facts. want to do that. So, that's awesome. So to me, that's why I've never done it. But what I do want to do is I do want to help uh, boxing gyms um in a way where they can create what i created okay. because i know there's a lot of boxing gyms don't really make money so and, and they do not and if they do make money they're only focused on money right. or vice versa they're only right. focusing on boxers but to be able to create both where you can create a business and create good boxers and a good environment and a good community all in one how can you do that and that's what i would like to educate and help gyms do and I think that's kind of the vision that I have for myself as far as what I would do is maybe do similar to CrossFit if you're not familiar but what CrossFit did is they licensed a program right so their program is a license that any gym can run a CrossFit class or training session but then they can do whatever the fuck they want to they want to have yoga they want to have this they want to do that they could do that right. because honestly you can't really with things that we do you can never tell someone to coach a way they you want them to coach exactly like you because right. everyone has got their own touch. Sure. So, and when you do franchise, you have to do everything identical. And when you try to get them to do everything identical to you, that's when this starts happening. You start bumping heads, da da da. Well, this fucking guy thinks it is da da, and it starts going downhill from there. Right. So, my think, my role for myself is for sure just probably just educate, help, likes is probably maybe but never franchise. I will never want a franchise. I love that perspective because I feel like as a business owner, everybody has that pressure on you or like puts that pressure on you of what's the next step? Mm -hmm. Where are you gonna grow? Yeah. Don't be satisfied. And it's not that you're not saying you're satisfied. You're just saying that you don't want to go the franchise route. Yeah. And I think that's awesome because that, that helps somebody like myself, a young business owner, like try to figure out that there's, you don't have to. Yeah, you don't. You know what I mean? Because I yeah. feel like I feel like the assumption is if you want to grow, this is the next step. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And so it's nice to know that and it doesn't have to be the case. Exactly. And I think as far as like gyms, uh, it's a business. And the fact that it is a business, people try to compare it to 
other successful businesses and the first thing successful businesses they do is they franchise. Right. All right, let's open all these things up. Let's do this and that. Right. You can't really do that with with the things that we do. It, it's not something you can franchise 100 Daniels and put them all over. Right. It's not going to be identical to your place because right. you make it that. But one thing you could do is help and guide someone make it their place. Like, I wouldn't mind helping a guy, Jason Johnson, boxing academy or boxing whatever, and this guy, Jason, has his own place and is dope, and I guided him and I helped him, and that would be that same satisfaction that you say you get from when you get a review and da 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 It's like, damn, he's doing hella good. He's got five national champions. He's got right. two pros, and he's got... And he's driving a Lambo. Right. Fuck, that's dope. I helped him. You <laughs> right, know what I'm saying? Right. Like, uh, like that right there for me would be the same satisfaction as if I did grow, even though I didn't really grow. You know what I'm right. saying? So that's the way I see it. Um, also, another thing, you can grow outside of this. You can do so many other things. Like, I feel like as leaders, you have so many things you can be, you can provide value in so many other ways. Podcasting, right. talking to different places. It's not just opening a second location is the only way you can grow. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I like that a lot. So That's yeah, awesome. For sure, man. So um, do you hear that a lot from people? That was the next step? Do you hear that a lot? Not lately, because lately I've been kind of on the side of me talking to other people mm -hmm. and talking to people that are maybe just starting. Yeah. So like I've been almost like seen as more, more on like mentor. Yeah, more the mentor side. Yeah. But like I was just, I forgot who, I was just talking to someone the other day and I was like, man, you know the question I get nervous about is what's next? I was like, cause people used to ask me that and I had a good answer. Oh, this is what I want. It's like now if somebody asks me that, I'm gonna be like, uh. <laughs> like, <laughs> that's you it. know, like, yeah, cause I just don't know right now. And so that's kind of the crossroad that I'm at. Uh, so I haven't been asked that a lot lately. Yeah, so. you'll see too. Like uh, I came up with other like as I started uh, growing and I started getting my system down and I started delegating things and I started getting more free time. Yeah. When you're a hustler and you're like motivated with your free time, you start getting ideas. Like you know what, I'm gonna start doing this, and then you're like, oh shit, I'm gonna boom, I'm gonna do that. Like I just shared with Scott an idea of mine. All these things come from when you start getting free time right? and you start delegating. And if you're not at that point yet, that's probably because you're not ready to grow. Right. You're not ready to right. this. And if that doesn't happen, it's going to be hard for these ideas and these things to come up. They'll come to you, though. You'll see it. You're like, oh, shit, I, I got a call in there. You know, like God, God puts things in your way yeah. for a reason. You know, and it'll come to you for sure. Um, Let's go. Let's go. Let's, Let's go. Make it I love learning something new, baby. Isn't That's what that, I'm talking about. Right? Yeah. Yes, sir. I love it. Dropping knowledge on me. So, I appreciate uh, that. next thing, man, I wanted to tell you real quick. How do you? How did you feel when I told you I wanted to work with you and I wanted to connect with you and we were so close to each other? Did you ever feel like a threat, or did you ever feel like, hmm, why is this gym that's two miles away want to work with me? Like, did you ever feel that way? Curious. No, I took it as a compliment. Yeah. A compliment because for one. I got, like I told you when I first ran into you, I've known of your brand, you guys have done a good job. And so mm -hmm. I haven't known you personally, but I've known or seen Jose Morales Box Academy for a while, just yeah. whether it's in the community or on Instagram and things like that. Mm -hmm. um, and so I felt it as a compliment that you know you saw that I could add some value to what you were doing. Yeah. Um, I don't see, I don't take a lot of people as straight competition, especially because I'm so niche. Yeah. Like I don't do any skills training. Well, I do a little bit of football receiver skills training, but I don't do a lot of like, I don't do boxing. I don't do MMA. I don't do basketball. I don't do soccer. We work with all these different athletes, but yet I know they have their other specialty coaches, yeah. their skills coaches. And so, uh, I feel like I can be a really good supplement to a lot of people. And so I don't feel any form of competition with you. I just think that what I, like the same thing I talk with Amy and Alex and all them when they come in the door is like, Hey, you're going to do what you do. And my goal is to help put rims on the Ferrari. You yeah. know what I'm saying? When somebody comes to you that's already polished, you're not looking to change the body style of a Ferrari. You're like, you bought that because it's already looking good, but you make little tiny tweaks here and there yeah. to help make it a little bit better. I so love that. That's I my love goal. how you how you explain that. That's badass. You know, that's not, not everyone sees it that way. That's why I wanted to ask you. A lot of people would be like, damn, we're too damn close or that, right. that, that. And the fact that you looked at it with a, what that meant, that perspective that you had and the way you approached it, I think that says a million ways about your business, about you and, and why you're going to be successful and why you are successful because you don't look at things 
with a negative point of view. You know what I'm saying? Look, you're not looking at things with, hold up, hold on. Why is this guy trying to connect with me? You know what I'm right, saying? Right, right. So, yeah, man. Uh, so, uh, same reason for me. Like, uh, uh, so I had who brought it up to me. Someone brought it up to me and was like, oh, he's going to this gym nearby. That's that's tight. And then he asked me, he's all, how do you, why'd you send him there? Like, da, da, da. I'm like, there's never enough knowledge and there's never... There's things I can't do, right? And and that's and that's part of being right. a good business owner and a leader is that if you're not good at something, don't spend hours or don't spend time or don't spend all this unnecessary energy trying to be the best at something that is not you. Yes. When you can bring somebody to do that for you and pay them for their skills, you know what I'm saying? Like, why am I gonna try to be the best conditioning coach? or the best dynamic training coach when that's not me. Right. I'm a boxing coach. Right. That's not what I do. What I do, I get Daniel. Daniel does that for me. And same. And that's how, and, and I think that's how, uh, it, I always look at it in like a bigger picture and a bigger thing is like, that's so many things the world could do now instead of always trying to fight with each other and all that, when we can kind of, and actually the episode prior to this one before yours, I actually talk about that specifically. So. Anyways. Well, I feel like what it, people think that you're giving away business, mm -hmm. but what you're really doing is you're actually gaining confidence in your athletes. You're actually gaining that Jose cares about me so much, he's willing to have me work with someone else. Mm -hmm. Because I tell the same, same thing to some of my people, like kids, that, football players that want to do seven on seven teams. I don't have a seven on seven team. I'm like, bro, this is the best spot you should go to. Even though that business is technically a competitor because yeah. it's another gym or it's another training facility. But I'm like, if I don't have something for you, if I don't believe I can provide that value for you, I think I want what's best for you. Amen. And, and too, many Amen. People, too many people want what's best for them, yes. not what's best for the athletes. I've I, I actually done that with even with my athletes. I don't know if you've done this yet, but I've got to the point where I've actually told my athletes, my boxers, my people, you know what, you should go here. You know what, I don't think you should be here. And the reason behind that, because I, I can see that you do better here or you right. do better there. Not that I'm bad for you, it's just I can tell you will gain more there. Yeah. And it, I think it takes a lot to say things like that. You know for what I'm saying? For sure. Because you have to put them first. And at the end of the day, that's what they're for. It's not for you, Right. it's for them. Yeah. And 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 definitely like not thinking about your pocket. You know, some people are like, oh shit, but I'm gonna lose out how much money if I tell them to leave yeah. or whatever. But being honest is so much more too because them leaving or them knowing, seeing how much they care, guess what? They're gonna always remember that you cared for them right. enough. And also having people like us connecting like that, who says people can't go to both gyms? Right. Who? For sure. Is there a rule that they can only go to one gym? For sure. No, they can go to your gym and mine, vice versa. Somebody from here can be like, hey, I do a class. I train. I'm not coming tomorrow because I'm going to be with Daniel tomorrow. I'll come back uh, Thursday, Friday or whatever. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. That's, that's what's dope as fuck. I love that shit. And I think a lot of people assume that, oh, well, when I get big enough, I'll start doing that because now I'm not worried about money. But what mm -hmm. they don't realize is you got to do that in the beginning and that will elevate you to a place mm -hmm. where you feel like now you don't have to worry about it. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like people think you got to get there first. But that's not how it is. It's the same thing with money. I'm a big money guy. Like I love uh, stocks and finance and savings. And it's like people say, oh, well, when I'm a millionaire, then this is what I'll do with my money. I'll save this, I'll invest this. And it's like, if you can't handle your money with $1,000, you're not gonna be able to handle it when it's a million dollars. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's you have to have check. those habits, those traits when you got nothing. And then it just continues to grow. Hey, Amen. So. I don't think I've said amen so much on an episode <laughs> until this guy came through. I don't know why. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> That's tight. Hey, uh, it was cool how I ran into you, man. We were eating. Uh, I was actually with Crown Bay. I was with the Jiu-Jitsu, Ryan. Yeah, Garden of Eden. Yeah, fire-ass place. So good. That place is so, so good. good. If you've never been there, you guys got to go check it's it out. It's amazing. Uh, but Ryan says what's up to you, and then we interact, and we sat down, and then I got to meet your wife and all that. Um, I wanted to ask you this. How is it being married? How do you handle... Um, uh, like, how do you find the balance? Also, the the if there's women around or there's this or um, the whole thing. Yeah. How do you give me some tips or things for all the listeners for myself? I don't know with you. How how do you handle that? I'm curious. So it's not about how I handle it. It's about how she handles it. 
-hmm. And that's why it's so important to pick the right person and the right partner. Like that's why you hear like Elon Musk and all these big time billionaires that are like, hey, stop worrying about all those, you know, women running around. Find that one that's gonna ride with you and rock with you, and that's when you're gonna see yourself explode. Because yeah, I've had to make some sacrifices, but she's had to make way more sacrifices than me. And so when we were first dating, I remember telling her like, because she wanted it to get, be a little more serious. And I was like, hey, I just want to let you know, like, I'm grinding. I'm working at nine o'clock at night and at five o'clock in the morning. Like, when they, maybe when I get to a place that I can calm down and slow down a little bit, then maybe we could get more serious. But like, this is, that's not what I'm looking for right now. And she dropped some knowledge on me, dude. She said, she looks me straight in the eyes and she said, do you think that uh, as your business grows, your life's going to slow down or speed up? And I was like, probably speed up, honestly, because it's just going to grow. You're going to get busier. And she's like, so don't you think that maybe you just need to find somebody that can keep up with you and like and ride with you through that crazy journey? And I was like, might have to keep this one around a little <laughs> while, you know? Like, hey. Next thing you know, I was like, will you? No. <laughs> hey, you that's know? a good, hey, that's, that's dope. And that was before we were even, that we weren't even like seriously dating. It was like, we were just kind of just started talking. We were in the beginning of our relationship. Mm -hmm. And she dropped that on me and I was like, interesting. No girl's ever said that before. Most girls are like, well, you need to sacrifice for me. You need to give me more. Mm -hmm. You need to do this for me. And that's what she did. And man, I don't eat dinner until nine o'clock at night, Monday through Thursday. And I'm not saying it's easy, but what I'm saying is not a lot of women are cool with that. Not a lot of people are cool with you being gone all evening throughout the work. She's a teacher, so she works till three o'clock. And then she sometimes goes to the gym. Sometimes she has her own clients or whatever she's doing in between. And then she comes and helps me out at the gym from like six o'clock until eight o'clock. So she's grinding to help elevate the brand and the business that you know I started. And so that's why I try so she to, coaches with you too? She coaches, uh, she does some private trainings yeah. and then she runs a lot of my front desk. So she handles like all the paperwork, she yeah. handles the billing and, and uh, dude, I could not handle it without her. Like when she's like, hey, I need a couple days. I'm like, I'm tired or whatever. I'm, I'm swimming when she's not there. I'm like, holy crap, this is way more than I thought it was. Like, oh yeah. you don't really realize it until you have to be do everything again. Cause I got to kind of write that off for her. No. Cause now she does it and it's a job, dude. Holy moly, it's it a is job. A job. So That's as far crazy. as- She does that and she teaches? And she teaches, man. She does That's it all. Love. Yeah. She so, does love you. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. And you know, like, yes, there's times like I have to be like, hey, okay, you know, I'm, we're gonna go on a trip. Like I have to be willing to, to, to give her back time. to her and yeah, give her time. Yeah. Um, but when people ask me about how do you make balance, how do you make it? I don't, like we don't. Like she's just with me, she's on my hip, she's attached to me and she sees the vision. You, if you don't have somebody that sees what you're doing and that knows that you know God's got a plan for you then this is something that you're destined for, then they're not gonna stay with you. They're not mm -hmm. gonna rock with you. And so I was so blessed and lucky to find somebody that that saw that in me and that was like, I got you. Well, yeah. I'm gonna do this with you. What's her dream? Does she have a dream that like, as far as outside of dynamic training, outside of your business, does she have like, oh, I wanna do this or her sole purpose is you guys together? Like what's her mentality like? That's, I'm curious. Yeah, that's a great question. Cause that was one of the biggest things I harped on with her in the beginning when we started growing is, cause my mom and dad, my, when my dad started Lord's Gym, my mom, my mom's been working at Costco since day one, but she kind of just hooked her, her wagon to my dad. And as things have gone on, you know, I've seen my mom, you know, she's made comments here or there like, yeah, well, I never got to, you know, pursue, you know, my dream because I was always helping your dad out. And I'm like, dang, I don't want that for me. I want to make sure that my wife or my woman feels like I'm still seeing her for what she wants because I believe everybody's got a plan and a yeah, purpose. You know what I mean? Sure. And so we had that conversation a ton. And, uh, and she's gone back and forth between a lot of different jobs and uh, I might be speaking prematurely, but I think that she loves teaching. Her mom's been a teacher for a long time. I think it's something that she really enjoys doing. Yeah. Um, and so she's been, she's substitute teaching, but she's gonna go on the way to getting her credential. And uh, you know, that was one thing that I really wanted to hit home was like, babe, Oh, I know yeah, you're helping me, but I don't want you to have resentment. Because guess what? In 20 years, I don't want you to oh, be like, did was you know what I mean? F you. I didn't get to do my dream. You know yeah, what I mean? No, it's true. And I don't. I want to be happily married, not now, but for forever. You know forever. what I'm saying? So that was a big thing is I want her to know, like, I, I hear you. I see you. Like, if we need to make adjustments, we will. For sure. You know, so. No kids, right? No kids. Yeah. So it's yeah. just full-time grinding right now. Full-time grinding. Yeah. Hey, get it. Get it. Um, yeah, man, I love it. I love it. One other thing I was gonna get out before we get- Can I crack this? I, that was that thing I was gonna tell you. <laughs>
So let me tell the story behind the water. Homie walks in here with some like Nestel Arrowhead. 7 Eleven. I'm like, hold up, man. Don't disrespect me like that. I'm like, I had him drink out of that other water. I'm like, now you're going to officially try this water. <laughs> give me a sip. Give me an honest. Give me your honest review. I'm kind of nervous right now. I got, I got a lot of pressure on me for drinking this drink, water. Drink, I drink with you. In the words of uh, Bobby Boucher. Yep. That's some high quality H2O. <laughs> so, <laughs> so what you think? It's good. So tell me about it though. Because nah, nah. I know you were like, let me, let me sip. I want you to talk to me. Let me sip on it while you talk to me. Because <laughs> I'm a big water guy. So, I drink water. All I do all... People all right, are, so then you should know the difference. So what do you think? Does it taste the same? Does it taste better? Does it taste worse? You can be honest, you're not gonna hurt my feelings. Cut, this motherfucker <laughs> said now I'm playing. <laughs> Dump this out. What'd you think? Tell me, tell me. So I'm getting, what, what we got? Some pure, pure purification in no, here? No, hold on, hold on, just don't read, dude. Don't read <laughs> nah, I'm playing. What'd you think? One it to tastes, 10. It tastes clean. One to 10, 10 being the best water you ever drank. What do you give it? Uh, be honest, be honest, know, no bro. pressure. Just I feel like honest. I need to have the best water in the world next to me. I don't even know. because I, I mean, you're going to get I a high this. ranking because I was just drinking some 7-Eleven bottle of water. This dude walked in with some 7-Eleven, so I know you're going to... What do you think? This is good. This I'm going to give it I'm gonna give it a smooth 9. Smooth 9. Smooth yeah. nine. only reason I don't give it a 10 is because I, I feel like I would need the so best good. water right next to me. Like something it's comparable to be it able to give it. Huh? No, it's really good, yeah. It's really good, I love this so water. talk to me about it though, because this is branded, bro. Branded, this is bro. Jose I'm about, Morales. I'm about, it on, I'm about to put it at the nugget. That's bro, next step, bro. Let's do I this. sell water, baby. Tell I me sell about water it. to a goldfish. This is awesome, tell me about it. Man, it just came about, it was up there. You got an Instagram for your water? You just got, yeah. Come on, baby, you never heard of the best water in the Dude, world? this guy's an entrepreneur <laughs> right here. Holy moly. This, guy, no. this is so, awesome. So, uh, it, I was at the, it was, I sell water up front. I was like, you know what? Why do I got to have this fucking Costco water or something? I'm like, what if I just put, get my own water? So I looked into it, found my water, found a distributor. That's tasted wild. It, tasted it, tastes good. Boom, started selling my own water. And you know what's crazy? <laughs> a crazy thing about it, uh, it sells more than really? the other water. Because people want that Jose Morales water, it's bro. It's weird. Brand. Yeah, the it's brand. It's about the brand. It's a brand. That's why people buy Gatorade. No matter how trash it is, yeah, just, they love that Gatorade, it's dude. It's weird. I, I, I mean, I didn't think it would be like that big of a difference, you know what I mean? And made it happen. That's awesome. Boom. Entrepreneur, bro. You can't stop. Made it happen. Can't stop. Can't stop, won't stop. All right, so now to the next subject. Um, if you're out here on a Friday night, Saturday night, where you go out to eat? What's your spot out here that you oh, like to eat? Oh, boy. I wanna, I'm curious. I love to eat. That's my, like, danger zone. That's why I got to work out so hard. I got to work out. People That's say you work so out fat. hard to look to good. Eat. I work out so I can eat good. Yeah. You know what I mean? So me and my wife, since we do work so much, are, like, one on one time, a lot of times as well. Like, hey, let's go out, get, let's go to dinner. Yeah, you know what I mean. I feel you. I do um, the same. Shoot. This guy, he's my twin. Dude, I love food. Where you go? Where's your spot? Friday night, you going out? Where's that? I want to know. It's a tough one. I got a couple in my head. All right, give okay, me a couple in my spots. head. And tell me so when if, to get there when I go. So there. if we're going, if we're going casual, this start. This start actually with my dad. Damn, we, this guy really got spots. Chicago Fire. Chicago Fire. We used to have to drive to Folsom all the time. Then it came to Roseville. Roseville now, yeah. Right. So we go bone in. Buffalo wings, because you mm. can't go boneless. People that like boneless wings are a little suspect, all right? You got to have the bone in there. Yes, I agree with bone you. Bone in, buffalo wings. I like the medium, because people don't know. They just say buffalo, but they got mild, medium, and hot. I like medium, gives you flavor, a little spice. Everything is nice. Then we go extra crispy on extra the wings. Extra crispy on the wings. And then I get a side of the buffalo sauce, because when they extra crispy, most of the time they're not wet anymore, because mm. they kind of dry them up. So then you got to put the sauce on them again. Because nothing worse than, you know, that chicken wing, you eat it and it's got the soggy, yeah, fatty, yeah, little, yeah, yeah, the skin yeah, yeah. rolls off and you're like, bro, well, this is gross. It. She's like, man, you got to put more sauce That's on how this. like well, Wingstop is. And I'm like, mm -hmm. I don't like that. So we get them crispy so they're crunchy, but then you put the sauce on top. Bro, that's, Fire. that's it. All right, next I love spot. chicken That's wings. a casual spot. That's the casual spot for like wings. Um, our guilty pleasure is like a Moscow mule. Me and my pops love Moscow mules. Mm -hmm. So we'll get some, a couple of Moscow mules and some, some chicken wings, bro, and that's it right yeah. there. That's, that's yeah. the spot. I haven't met your dad, and your dad seems legit. Bro, he's awesome. He makes me, like people, like I come out and I talk to him, they're like, oh, I love your energy. Like, I'm literally, I'm not even playing. Like if, if he's a 10 out of 10 on energy, I'm like a five or a six. Like he would come in here and break all your cameras. Because he's got so much energy. That's tight. Like, he's wild. He's 59. 59, he's still banging 59. with energy. Oh, yeah. 
He's got a rhyme for every age, man. He was like, I'm 56 and still in the mix. I'm 57 <laughs> and going to heaven. I'm 58 and feeling heaven. great. Like, <laughs> like, he's, he talk, like, I tell him all the time, like, if The Rock had an older brother, that would be him. Oh, Muhammad Ali? Yep. Muhammad Ali was the same. He yep. would always say these sayings. So what's your, you didn't give me the, ca- the, the fancy spot. Oh, um, You said casual, what's your fancy spot? Lately, we, we like go, going to uh, Siena. I don't think I've been there. Siena, that, it used to be Crush. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah. Over whatever, there. something like that. Um, either that or High Stakes in Thunder Valley, oh, that Thunder steakhouse. Valley. Oh, you. We you, only go there for the fancy. Oh, that is really, the special you're occasions. Really bootsy. Bro, I love me a good steak dinner. Like, and that's and my wife's the same way. Cause the girl I was dating before my wife was a, was like ate like nuts. That's oh, it. she ate like she a rabbit. Was, yeah, and oh, I couldn't she do had it. That rabbit the, the moment it was over, I said, I, I gotta have a meat eater for life. I'll be real. I was considering going vegan. I can't do it. I, I, I still I've can't tried. do it. I've tried. I've tried a couple times. I can't do it, bro. That's why it's hard. I'm like, how do you not yeah. like meat? I can't do Try it. Try tip, all this steak. Oh, man. But what I have done is I've, I have shrunk how much meat I'd eat. Because me and my dad used to eat literally a plate full of meat. Yeah. Like, we used to go crazy. Because my pops was a Greek and Italian. So I don't know if you've ever seen, like, my big fat Greek wedding, that movie. Yeah, yeah. Where she, she dates the, the white guy, and he comes in, and he's like, oh... I'm a vegetarian. I don't eat meat. And they're like, oh, you don't eat meat? That's okay. We make lamb. <laughs> like, you know what I mean? Like, they, like, we don't even know what it's like to not eat meat. So I've gotten better at eating a little bit less meat yeah. uh, so that, you know, hopefully I don't die when I'm like 70, you know, or 60 years old or something trying to live long. That's tight. That's uh, tight, though. But yeah, Tradition. we don't know how to not eat meat in our family, yeah. bro. It's wild. All right, man. So if you are talking to a younger 18-year-old gentleman, or female, male, female, you had any advice you want to give them, what advice would you give that person? I would give them my go-to line. It's find something you love to do so much, you do it for free, and then do it so well that people are willing to pay you for it. Uh That's the line right there. That is my go-to. When people say, I don't know what I want to do with my life, what do you love doing? And not just like, oh, well, I love playing the violin. Like, okay, cool. But like, what do you love doing so much that you can help other people with it? Because that's how you start a business, right? It's there's a, there has to be you a can need. Help a person, you know what I'm saying? The violin. Oh, for sure, yeah. You but can do it worldwide. Too. You got to know like, what is there is there a need in this category? You know what I'm saying? Like, because that's really how businesses get started. Is there's a need and you're filling that need? Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, find something that you just love to do so much. Hell. That you would yeah. do it for free because that's what we, as business owners, people say, what's your work-life balance? But we don't turn off. Yeah, all day. We don't. Like, Lately we try, day, thinking about it. but we don't turn off. Yep. That's just the reality. If you're good at what you do and you really love what you do, you don't turn off. But then again, why would you want to turn off if you really yeah. love it? Because people go, oh, well, don't you need to shut off? But I love it. Yeah. Why would I turn off? But I love it. And yeah. that's why, like, that's what people don't really get is if you need to yes. turn off long term or, like, for a big period of time, you don't really love it. Yeah. You know you what I'm like saying? It. Exactly. Yep. So. Exactly. Man, he brought a whole bunch of heat. Man, I love this episode. <laughs> My guy. So if you can name this episode, what would you want to name this episode? Get name it for me. Shoot. Heat. Heat. <laughs> heat with DT training. Heat. Bring I in the fire. Like that. With hella fire. I like that one. I like that one. <laughs> All right, brother. So this episode drops on a Monday. What is your Monday ritual? What do you? How do you like to start off your? Weekly routine. Oh my gosh. So my, my mornings, um, especially on Mondays, is the only time I get for me. So from 6.30ish to about 8, 8.30 is me time. So, and, uh, so that's where like I wake up, I got to say a prayer. I got to try to start my day the right way with some, a little bit of worship music. I make myself a mean breakfast. And then from there, I start creating ideas for social media content because I don't have anyone else building my content. Mm-hmm. So I have to go out and kind of build my reels or build my YouTube ideas and things like that. Um, I like that. And then I, when gonna, the clock starts, I get a workout and it's go, bro, nonstop till nine I'm o'clock. I'm gonna try that. I've never ever started my day with worship music. Dude, it's amazing. And I like worship music. Because me, I, I was watching this one guy and he was talking about how like. In the morning, that's when you have the most fresh ideas and like you're the most attentive and you're like, let's We're go. We're in the shower. Yeah, like you're ready to go. <laughs> you know what I mean? And so it's like, if you're trying to cr- be creative late at night after you, you know how it is, you're mentally yeah, you're spent. Exhausted. You're not gonna get nothing done productive. So Very you gotta true. feed yourself so that we can feed other people. I like it, I like it. Good stuff. Hey, well, hey, hey. Hope you guys enjoyed this episode, man. Anything you wanna add before we end it? No, man, I just, I love being out here with you, and yeah. you know we've been working together now with with your team for a little over a month. Yeah. Um, as of yesterday, 
And I just can't wait to, to continue to see where I'm, this relationship grows, man. Man, there's going to be great things. I I already see our, our like, you. we have so much similarities, the energy, the culture, the mindset, everything. I just already see us in the future doing great things together. No joke. The, right now you're working with a, a handful. I can see you working with more than a handful. Let's go. So it's going to be dope. It's going to be badass. I appreciate you. I, I thank you for being a part of it. And last, before we end it, you, how do people stay in contact with you? How can people connect with you? Tell us where you're located. Oh, yeah. Spit down the 411. So you can't hide from me on social media. I got Instagram. I got Tic Tac. I got Snapchat. I got Twitter. I got them all. At you got Moco Space? <laughs> no, I, got, I still got my MySpace active. No, I'm just uh, playing. Moco Space. <laughs> what is that? Uh, I don't think they have it no more, but it was like MySpace for Mexicans. Uh <laughs> <laughs> I look Mexican. I ain't Mexican, bro. I'm Greek, Italian, and Chinese, and I came out looking Mexican. That's what Chinese. I tell people. I'm Greek, Italian, and Chinese, and I came out looking Mexican. So I tell people, hey, I don't know. I know a little bit of Spanish. Yeah, I can tell you're not so, Mexican. Yeah. A Mexican can tell you. A real you're Mexican. Mexican can tell, but uh, white people think I'm Mexican. I'm not, I know he ain't Mexican. But, uh, all right, so how do we connect with you? Uh, social your... media at Fit Life of DT on YouTube, Dynamic Training with DT. Uh, if you're looking for us, we're right down the street. If you know where Jose Morales is, we're about two miles down the road off 65 and Sunset. So hit me up. Boom. Let's go. Well, thank you guys for listening. I hope you guys enjoyed this episode. Thank you for coming on, man, and bringing the heat. We'll catch you guys next week, next Monday, where I got some more heat. I will be by myself on this next episode. So thank you guys for tuning in, and we're out. Deuces.